Today, I'm breaking down the absolute basics of Python. It's syntax, structure, variables, and data types. If you're just starting out, it's important to know these fundamental principles. So first, let's talk about Python syntax. Syntax is just a fancy way of saying the rules for writing code. Each coding language has its own syntax, and Python syntax is simple, clean, and designed to be easy to read. And this makes it great for beginners. For example, Python doesn't use curly braces like C++ or Java. Instead, it relies on indentation to structure the code. So let's compare the same simple program in both Python and C++. Can you see the difference? In Python, the indentation tells the program where the function starts and ends. While in C++, curly braces are used instead. Python's approach makes it a lot cleaner and easier to read. Another reason Python's beginner friendly is that it's almost like writing in plain English. For example, let's compare the classic Hello World program in Python and Java. Again, you can see there's quite a big difference. In Python, you're literally just writing print Hello World. And that's it. In Java, you have to add a lot more, like defining a class and a main method. So these are two of the main reasons why Python's often recommended for beginners as it gets straight to the point. So now let's talk about variables. You can think of a variable as a label for storing information. You can then reference this variable later in your code to retrieve or update the information it holds. Variables help us store data like numbers, text, or lists, making our programs more dynamic and flexible. So before we dive into an example, here are the rules for naming variables. They can only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. They cannot start with a number, and they're case sensitive. In Python, we use snake case where words are separated by an underscore. So in this example, let's create a variable called name and store the text Jasmine. We'll also create a variable called age and store the number 30, along with a variable called isMember and store the value true. Now let's check if they've been stored. We can use the print function and input the variable name, for example, print name, print age, print is member. You can now see that when we run our program, the name, age, and member status has been printed. So what would happen if we tried to name a variable using a number or using dashes instead of underscores? Let's take a look. You can see that both these variables will cause an error as they break the rules of how to name variables. Now, before we wrap up, let's quickly talk about something that will come in handy in the future. And that's the reassignment of variables. In Python, you can easily change the value stored in a variable at any time. So if we go back to our first example, let's say Jasmine stops being a member. We can update is member to false. And then when we print it again and run the program, you can see that the information stored in the variable has been updated. I'll dive into how we can use these reassigned variables in a future video. So now that you know the basics of what a variable is and how to use it, let's talk about data types. Python has several built-in data types that you'll be using all the time. First up, we have strings, and all a string is, is a sequence of characters wrapped in either single or double quote marks. So in this example, we'll create the variable greeting and store the string, welcome to CodeBytes. We can use the type function to determine what data type our variable is. So let's print our variable, and then let's also print the data type of our variable by writing print type greeting. When we run our code, you can see that welcome to code bytes has been outputted along with the class of string. We can therefore see that the variable greeting is a string. Now let's look at numbers. Python has several numeric types depending on the kind of number you're working with. Integer represents whole numbers while float is used for numbers that have decimal points. So in this example, we'll set the variable age to 30 and add a price of 1999. You can see that when we run the code, that the age is an integer as it's a whole number and the price is a float as it has a decimal. Now let's talk about Booleans. They are simple, true, false values and come in handy when you're working with conditions. In this example, we have is member. So if the value is true, then the person is a member. And if it's false, then the person is not a member. So when we run the code, you can see that the program prints false as the person is not a member and that the type is Boolean. Now here's a quick glimpse at the remaining data types that we haven't covered in depth yet. 
These are important, but don't worry too much about them for now as I'll dive deeper into these data types in future videos. For now, you just need to know they exist. So that's the basics of Python syntax, variables and data types. You don't need to know everything right away, just start experimenting with these concepts and you'll soon get the hang of it. If you found this helpful, give us a follow and let me know in the comments about something that you've always wanted to build with code.